My name is Ed Nardi, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission, and I am calling this public meeting to order at 7 p.m. The meeting will be conducted virtually. To ensure public access to the deliberations of the meeting, the public may access this call through video conferencing or telephone. Following the presentation by the petitioner and questions from the commission, members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. Please identify yourself with name and address for the record. You can also raise your hand from your phone by dialing star nine and use star six to unmute. All video screens will be turned off with the exception of the commissioners, Delia and the current petitioner. Once the commission has acted on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. Screen sharing will not be permitted unless absolutely necessary and all votes will be taken by roll call vote. In the event of any technical difficulties, all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will automatically be continued to the November 16th NRC meeting. This meeting is being recorded. And at this time, I would ask the commissioners to introduce themselves. Bill? Uh, Bill Cremeza. Gary? Uh, Gary Kleiman, even though I'm identified as Karen Bakoven on the thing. <laughs> I was just going to follow up with that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gary. And Bill? Um, and uh, moving to our first agenda item, we've got a couple of meeting minutes to approve this evening, one from July 6th, 2022, and one from July 27th of 2022. I read them through, uh, another excellent effort by Karen. I, I didn't have any particular comments on those sets. Bill, Gary, you good? Well, nor have I. I thought they were good. I, no, no comments. Okay. If I yeah, can have a motion. My side. Uh, yeah, I move that we adopt the meeting minutes from July 6, 2022 and July 27, 2022 as drafted. I second that. All right. And the vote, Gary? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I am an I as well. Um, next item, uh, just uh, commissioner comments. Any, any general commentary from the commissioners this evening? Nothing no. for me. No, not okay. here. Okay. With that, we'll jump to the director's update. Delia. Uh, I just have one that I want to um, share with the commission. Um, we had an effort that the Haywood Meadows Stewardship Committee was interested in seeing. So uh, this is the corner of Walden Street and Haywood Street. Um, and it is technically part of Haywood Meadow. Um, and they wanted to see this sort of cleaned up a little bit. So a lot of buckthorn, um, some Norway maples, um, some little leaf linden. This is a before picture of that area and then after. And if you drive by this area, you will notice a difference. I mean, this had a lot of, mm. this is the little leaf linden that had a lot of just limbs hanging down. And um, now it's a sort of um, tree that kids would love to climb. Um, and then following that effort, we planted uh, 450 plugs with the assistance of um, five volunteers, Will and myself, and you can see Ed uh, Nardi was here um, helping with that effort. So uh, we're excited to see what comes up uh, or how well things come up next uh, spring. And Backyard Invasives is a local um, uh, invasives removal company, and they are um, continuing that effort to um, basically remove invasives along the tree line. So mostly buckthorn, multiflora, bittersweet from where we did these plantings and the Norways were removed um, north to the fire station. So um, if you, you know, next time you drive by there, take a look, you will definitely notice a difference. It does not look like this neglected corner um, as it has in the past. That's, great. Um, that's, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Delia. All right. I think we have two continuous this evening. Bill, you want to take that? Sure. I move that we continue to no November 16th without discussion. Two notices of intent. One is for 141 Comerford Road, DEP file 1371611. And the second one is for 160 Adams Road, DEP file 1371611. One five. Second. Thank you, Gary. And the vote, Gary? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I am an I as well. All right, so we'll move to our first continuance of the evening. 
And that is the NO Notice of Intent, uh, 176 Main Street, DEP file number 137-1614. Um, and I think, do we have either Sean or Mary to kind of just walk us through or uh, the kind of where we're at? I think Sean can uh, take care of that part. That'd be great. Hi, yes. Sean. Hi, good evening all. Uh, for the record, Sean Malone, Oak Consulting Group. Um, since our last meeting, um, we have um, made an additional submission with uh, plans revised per uh, some of the comments from the town engineer, uh, Justin Richardson. Um, we've also submitted a letter responding to some of the specific comments of the commission and the um, director. Um, so at this point, uh, we think we've responded to all outstanding issues. I'd uh, be happy to walk through anything in particular uh, if, if you desire. Yeah, from what I, I think as the notes indicate, and I'm sure you got a copy of those, I think I think we're in pretty good shape as far as the some of our considerations. I did have just a just kind of a general question, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. I, I again, this is really not our purview, but I know that there was perhaps a, a, a parking issue, traffic and parking, just wondering how that's resolving itself. So, you know, again, we don't just wanted to see how you're doing at those boards in case as we move towards an approval, if something were to change, it may may come back again. So any any just general update for us? Yeah, I, I, I can tell you that we did have a one of the requests of the town engineer was to submit a, a traffic study. Um, and we did retain uh, VAI, Vanessa Associates, and they performed that study that was submitted, um, I think, was it uh, early this week, Don, or, or last yeah. week? No, it was early this week. So we think we, we've addressed that comment. Other than that, we're pending uh, with the, the planning board for hopefully final approval in uh, a week or two weeks. A week. Okay. Next week. And then ZBA next, also next week. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Don. Um, and again, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just throw it out for one, one final consideration. I know that the staff has asked that the applicant, applicant would consider removing a portion of the fence along the new proposed meadow. And again, I, I guess I would just ask if, if, if there would be a further consideration to revisit that um, aspect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me um, speak to that. Um, I just saw the email prior to the meeting and I thought um, it was Delia outlining the idea of around the meadow area to remove that fence. And I'm okay with trying that. I just, I need to protect the interests of Concord Academy. And the only reason we have that fence up is because of the geese population and how it ruins the field from a safety and health hazard issue. So if we can agree to remove the fence, but I also agree to revisit it should the issue come to fourth, it really creates a safety hazard for me. Sure. Yeah, no, that 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 makes perfect sense. That that would be much that's appreciated. Good. That's I, a good. That's a good way of, of, of addressing it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and thank you for that. I think that that would make sense. And dealing with that, just kind of write that something like that into the condition to have it, you know, have a be able to come back and revisit if it's creating <clears throat> issues for the for the school. Right. So just to sort of put a little um, context in. Oops. So there's, um, uh, it's just at the top here. Julia, we might use the boathouse as a reference point and work towards the westerly edge there from that point would be my suggestion. Sure. So uh, the boathouse is generally in this location here, Don, right? You're in the vicinity yes. there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then to remove the fence from here. Away. I was suggesting here's the gate right here. And just to remove from, you know, it's A13 to the west. And this is the location where the meadow is proposed. And it extends here. So let me get that landscape plan up. Um, so A13 flag is here. The proposed meadow where you would have tall grasses for the most part until, you know, late fall. Um, <clears throat> it, you know, and here's the boathouse. If, if you want to go that far, I think that's fine. And I think it makes sense to include, and we can include a condition that um, 
allows for that to be revisited depending on how that is working for the school and whether the geese are staying off it. I mean, the whole thing with the meadow is that you won't have this low cut grass that the geese favor um, and the taller grasses, they shouldn't be interested at all in coming off that because they can't see predators and they don't have any interest in sort of, you know, hanging out in those areas, but obviously they do in the, the playing field. Um, and, and I think we understand that concern. So that's great, Don. Thank you for being open to that um, idea. Of... Can I just make one clarifying point on that? I, I kind of like Delia's points to go from the gate there. The only reason I say that is because we do have a robust summer camp program and they do use the river as an access point and they're right there. So maybe if we went from the westerly edge of that gate might make more sense as Delia stipulated earlier. Yeah, no, makes perfect sense then. And, and if I could add just one comment that maybe we don't remove the fence until after the meadow is established, not before, because that could present a problem mm -hmm. with establishing yeah. the meadow. Yeah, good point. Thank you, yep. Mary. We okay. also have big coyotes out, out there. I'm not sure that's helping or hurting us, but we're trying <laughs> everything we can. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, and it's and as I understand it, the uh, the cut and fill calculations, drainage improvements are still under review at CPW at this juncture. Delia? Yeah. Okay. So obviously, that I assume they'll finish up in the next week or so. And and with that, um, assuming that there's no changes, I think we should have an order of conditions ready for next meeting. And again, there's no need for you to attend that meeting necessarily as well. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Looks like a quality project and uh, assuming all goes well, good luck with the project. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank your you. support. Thanks so okay. much. Yeah, looks thank good. you. Thank you all. All right, uh, our next continuance this evening, uh, it's a notice of intent, 48Y Fitchburg Turnpike DEP file 137-1612. Uh, and uh, Bill, are you going to be uh, addressing or just touching on some issues? I think I think we're in, again reasonably good shape with you. I know there was a just a small handful of comments. Um, uh, Chris Clausen's here. Uh, oh, I'm hey, with, Chris. How are you? Uh, good. Hi. How are you? Good to see good. you. And uh, commissioners, um, uh, I, my address is two one three four Sevilla Way, uh, Naples, Florida. With me tonight is my attorney, uh, Bill Henchy, and my civil engineer, Matt Leidner. And from our last meeting, uh, the, the commission asked us to, to uh, make a couple of adjustments to our plans. And I, I'll go very quickly because we've done all of them. We've submitted them to uh, Delia. And I think uh, we're all, we're, everybody's uh, all online. But I just wanted to show that to you really quickly in case there was any questions. Oh. Uh, share from the beginning. Okay, so so here are the the updates that you asked us to incorporate. Um, one is uh, we uh, along Route 117 or uh, Pittsburgh Turnpike, we uh, were asked to show the underground um, and above ground uh, um, CMLP line work, and so we've added that to the drawings. Uh, you also asked us to add the approximate locations of the wetland lines to to that to that plan set, uh, and we have done that. And it's approximated. We didn't uh, go out and actually survey it. These are all approximated lines from aerial surveys and existing contours. And we, you also asked us to add a four foot sidewalk along Rookery Lane, which would connect back into the Sudbury sidewalks, we, which we've done. Uh, the next uh, area that you asked us to touch on was uh, there's a small outfall uh, structure. You asked us to um, uh, put some landscaping on either side of the pipe to stabilize the land. And, and uh, uh, engineering also asked us to put some um, uh, material on top of the riprap, which, which we have incorporated into the landscape plan. Uh, we uh, submitted a Japanese knotwood uh, control plan to Delia, uh, which includes identifying what they look like and how, uh, how to remove them. And the uh, last is uh, Delia uh, for me today that one of the com commissioners 
asked us to remove the uh, small easement area next to our uh, wastewater treatment facility um, from the CR, which I, I have, uh, our survey was able to generate a, a draft plan and I've included that here. So I'll take you through that really quickly. And um, this is the plan of uh, North Road or Route 117. This is the town line. And uh, you can see over here, we've added the approximate locations of the different uh, uh, um, buffer lines and uh, um, buffer zone lines and the riverfront lines. And we've added uh, details here about where the, the um, CMLP lines will be underground and then goes above ground after it goes into Sudbury. Uh, this plan is, a, is the updated civil plan, which shows where we've added uh, the four foot sidewalk, which is shown right here, right on the south side of Rookery Lane. It connects into the Sudbury sidewalks on either uh, end. Uh, you can see it comes around here and connects in over here as well. So we, we, made, uh, we made notes on the plans that that sidewalk will be an ADA compliant sidewalk and made of porous material. We think it's going to end up being a, a porous asphalt type of a surface, but uh, uh, that's what it will be. And the last area of the plan updates is this is the uh, outfall structure here. You can see that on the drawing. And here's the, the clouded area with the notes that um, we're adding uh, plant material. There's four. Uh, uh, VC, which I don't know what that plant Never is. Strawberry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we added those on each side of that. And then on top of the riprap, uh, we've, uh, we've, per the uh, town engineer, we, we've added some uh, compost and some hydro seed on top of that. So uh, this is uh, the Japanese knotweed uh, removal plan that we put together. I actually just went on the internet and found a couple of uh, nice pictures uh, so people could identify it who's doing, who will be doing the work. And then uh, this document uh, is almost 100% uh, plagiarized from a uh, uh, group in Wisconsin. I added a few um, little tweaks to it, um, uh, but basically it's gonna have, incorporate two methods. One is hand removal, and that's really for the smaller uh, sprouts. And then the uh, second one is cutting and using herbicide um, applications. It, it gives uh, uh, details on when to do it, how to do it, and how to dispose of the, uh, the plant material so it doesn't uh, regrow after it's been removed. And this plan here is an updated CR plan where uh, we removed uh, this small easement area. If you remember from our previous meeting, there was a discussion about what Mass DEP had required us to do, have, a, have an old, old zone adjacent to the uh, wastewater treatment plant. We thought the CR would accomplish that, but there's there's complications with the language. So we I like it that it's uh, we removed that. And that was per uh, Delia's uh, instructions. Uh, the surveyor will put that on a mylar uh, and stamp it and get that into uh, Delia here, ho hopefully by Friday. And uh, and that's that. That was the uh, extent of what you had asked us to um, uh, incorporate into into the plans. Yeah, I think that. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate walking us through those those updates and changes. Dealey, did you have one comment on that CR plan? Yes, Chris, can you go back to that CR plan, please? Sure. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, can you zoom in a little bit? Yes. And down by the uh, yep. this area, okay. You see that that little triangle that is right there. So I would suggest that you take out that bound okay. that hits the town line. Okay, like and right. Just connect there. the dots between the two above. Like right to there. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. Um. Okay. So where it says uh uh. North 6737 to yes. Yeah. Yes. And that, point, that to South 49. Nope, keep going down. Other direction. This it, way? It just, no, you're just getting rid of the small little point. That's all. This yeah. one. Right connected the dots above yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Cut that off. 
just okay. go from, from that point, you know, up from that yeah, point yeah. straight across to the right. Oh, over to here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, sure. That's fine. Uh, yeah, to eliminate this little no man's right. land right there. Okay, I, I can have them do that. That's fine. Um, th this boundary here satisfies DEP for their, they have a certain number of, uh, <clears throat> their regs require a certain number of feet from the, the actual facility and, and that's why it's an odd shape. So we this will only provide additional separation. So connect that dot to that dot. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Great. Um, commissioners, do you have any other comments in regard to the updates or? Yeah, I mean, one is just a comment that, you know, I'm really pleased to see the uh, planting plan around the, the high bush blueberries around the outflow outfall. And um, is there a native seed mix that's going to be put down over top. Okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure those are natives. And then um, the, the question that I have is around the not weed control plan, um, the timing of that, is that gonna be done before you start moving earth around so that not weed seeds get spread everywhere or? Uh, well, I think it's an ongoing process uh, from what, uh, what I know about not weed, which is not tremendous amount. Um, um, the, it takes more than one application to uh, eradicate it. And so I think the, the points we're, we're, we are aware of that when you are doing any type of disturbance in the land, you don't want to spread it. And that includes, you know, moving, you know, excavating materials or cutting grasses even. So, um, so we're conscious of that. I, I think I put that into the plan, uh, Delia, um, and, and when the best time to, to do the removal um if uh, yeah i mean I, I think i honestly i think the plan was a, a little bit generic but i think not weed is very challenging as well and you're going to be doing a lot of earth moving uh with this project um so that adds another challenge to it um and not weed is particularly challenging because it it when it breaks it will re regrow re so you know if you're hitting stuff underground that can regrow so i think um gary in response to your question it's going to be an ongoing from the get once earthwork starts um you know i think and maybe this needs to go into the conditions that um the knotweed will be hit from the beginning and that as the project continues that it has to be dealt with you know through the life of the permit <laughs> Yeah, I assumed it would be ongoing. I just wanted to make sure that the initial removal would be prior to earth moving. Yeah. I think the more Good. we can identify up front before that uh, any earthwork happens, the better for everybody. I mean, it taught, yeah, it'll, right. it'll be better for us from a long term maintenance plan. So yeah. we want to make right. sure that's reflected in, you know, I, I know it's generically reflected in, in, uh -huh land, but if we can, you know, have some specific language around, you know, an initial survey and uh, renew removal will take place before prior to any earth moving. Well, maybe I can suggest this. Uh, I know Delia, there's a requirement that we have to have like a, a pre-construction meeting. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe you walk that, uh, walk the property with me, we bring some tape out there, we flag some of the, the larger plants and so what would be better is to have your botanist flag yeah. those areas prior okay. to the pre-construction and then we can review those together okay all right uh, i can do that um okay. fine yeah and, and and just to clarify delia i think uh, you know i think you might have talked to chris about a, a, a minimum of a three-year effort here yeah okay right. that's yeah. It, it's in the uh, right i believe that's okay right yeah now. that yeah that'll just be a as part of the conditions if you will or it should be in the conditions. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that all sounds good to me. I'm happy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. All right. With that, we'll go out to the public. Any public comment regarding this application? I don't see any. Okay. Um, Delia, are you okay with? Um, <clears throat> I know we've got an order of conditions prepared for this evening. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add a condition or uh, to, to Gary's comment in terms of, uh, you know, 
I think you know, that the condition, I think it's 32, I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's a condition that relates to the uh, not weed. I think it needs to be modified to note that initial removal happens prior to earthwork, that it is ongoing for the three years, uh, at least three years of the permit. Um, and uh, just so you know, Chris, the commission doesn't allow foliar spray, so that will be in the conditions as well. Okay. And um, then the uh, botanist will flag the knotweed in advance of the pre-construction meeting that we'll review at the pre-con. Okay, that's okay, fine. So we, so we can note, Delia, those as, a, as noted by you as an amendment to the conditions, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And then Here, you the, want to, oh. the, the motion should be pending receipt of the revised CR plan by Friday. Okay. Gary, you want to take that one? You've got your mic. Just unmute. unmute. Of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I move that we close an issue order of conditions for DEP file number 1371612 um, with uh, the standard conditions 1 through 20. Um, and special conditions 21 through 60, um, as noted, and uh, finding A. Okay. I second that. Thank you, Bill. As amended, right? As amended. As amended. Yeah. yeah, I said as noted, but as amended, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Gary. And we'll take the vote, Gary. Aye. Bill? Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you, Chris. And team. thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Good evening. Yeah, you too. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. All right. We'll move to our new applications this evening. Uh, the first one is uh, a uh, abbreviated notice of resource area delineation 269 to 271 Commonwealth Ave, DEP file 137 1617. <laughs> And uh, Aiden? Yeah, Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so I am Aiden Schlaman with Stamps Game McNary. I'll be uh, representing 269 to 271 Commonwealth Avenue today. Um, I will share my screen here to show you the plan. Hopefully everyone can see this. Mm -hmm. um, fairly straightforward ANRAD here. Um, we got a fairly skinny lot here uh, with Warner Pond on the back. Uh, we're confirming wetland flag one to four here. Um, it's a fairly uh, easy delineation because there's, you know, there's a pond right there. So it's pretty obvious where it, um, things start and stop here. Um, but uh, yeah, fairly straightforward here. Uh, if you guys have any comments about it? I'd be more than happy to hear them. Okay, thank you, Aiden. Um, I don't have any particular comment, Gary, Bill? No, I I, I don't. I, I thought the uh, wetlands, looking at the town map, I thought the um, the wetlands was more extensive, but um, Correct. you, you that's, checked that's right, Bill. Exactly right. So the wetlands on the, the uh, Conservancy District mapping show far more expansive wetlands that extend beyond where this buffer zone is um, marked, which is why um, uh, there was a building permit application that came in and Karen flagged it and said, this is, you know, you're, <laughs> the work is within the 100 foot buffer zone. And um, so it, that's why the NRAD is being filed so that we could go out and on the ground confirm that that uh, delineation is, it's just, you know, there are occasions where the Wetlands Conservancy District is is not as accurate. Um, I mean, yeah. it's never as accurate as going on the ground and flagging, but in this case, it was quite different, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you okay. did confirm these. Uh, yes. Yes. Including, I went out and confirmed the flagging. Um, so including it's including flag number four that appears to be in the water. Flag number four is not in the water. I'm not sure why that shows the approximate edge, but uh, no, those flags are all terrestrial wetland flags. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. You've confirmed it. I have no questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and does any member of the public have a comment on this application? Not seeing okay. any. Not seeing any. All right. I think we have a finding prepared. Bill, you want to take that one? Sure. I move that we issue an order of resource area delineation for DE for, for 269271 Commonwealth Avenue, DEP file number 1371617 with uh, finding number one. Second. Thank you, Gary. And the vote, Gary? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Moving to the next uh, new application this evening. Uh, it's a re request for a determination of applicability. Uh, 157 Haywood Mill Road, RDA file 22-15. And let's see. Uh, the owner is Diaz, or is there a yeah. representative? Yes, hello. Is 617-448-0388 uh, related to 157 Haywood Mill Road? If you are, you could unmute yourself. I guess not. Diane Diaz Burton seems to yep. be the one who. Well, I don't think we have her. I think it's just just a small group here. <laughs> um, do you want to do you want to carry this over, Delia, to the next meeting? Well, it's an after the fact filing. The applicant was advised. Um, to have either her architect, her contractor, or herself present to present. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, uh, you have some photographs on the thumbnail. Yeah. 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 Show what the current condition is. I think it's probably, um, I, I I mean I I don't I don't like to present people's. It's not appropriate yeah. for me to present people's projects, but I would uh, agree. I would agree. Uh, yeah. So carry it over. So we'll carry postpone over. this. Until... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, we've got one. Hold on one second. Hello. Yes. Hello. Good evening. This is Diane Diaz. Oh and yes. And James Burton. Uh, my Thank apologies. You for joining. Our cell phone dropped. So ah, I'm sorry. Well, I'm you, Have I, you? I'm, I'm glad you rejoined. Thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' consideration. Can you tell sure. me what you need from me in regards to the application? Well, 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 Delia can put up the uh, the pictures. If you could just, you know, just just talk about the background for a minute and where you find yourselves and why you're here this evening, that would be that would be appreciated. Sure. We uh, are currently residing at one five seven Hayward Mill Road. We've been here for twenty one years. There was an original retaining wall, a deck with stairs that abutted it, and we're in the process of seeking a building permit to replace the existing retaining wall and the existing footprint for the deck. Yeah, there's no new effort. It's strictly existing footprint of the retaining wall and the deck. Mm -hmm. I was going to say part of it is that the wall is old, uh, uh, the retaining wall and deck. So we're, Sorry, we're, could we're, you uh, identify yeah. yourself for the record, yeah. please? Okay, James Burton. I'm Diane Diaz's husband. Okay. Thank you. So, so I like for like, and if over time, we need to replace it. Okay, and then, and obviously, you, 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 it, it appears from the picture you started on the project and perhaps realized you needed some permitting if you will. And well, why... when it took me about six months to get my drawings back from the engineer, the prior wall was not built sufficiently and it did not have an engineering plan. As soon as I obtained the engineering plan and my statement of work, I submitted that information for the building permit. And then I worked with Karen who coordinated with Delia 
to make an assessment of the wetland protection area, which we did report replace a small portion of the back piece back in 2008, but the future state will be a stone cement block wall versus the pressure treated timbers that failed. Okay, understood. Um, any, any questions from the commissioners this evening on this? I don't think so. It sounds like a repair and replace in kind with the exception of you're replacing wooden timbers with a concrete retaining wall, right? That's correct. Uh, and then our in kind. I mean, if the, uh, let me see if I can pull up the other drawing here. But the um, distance from the uh, buffer is the. Yeah, yeah. Or, it's in the 200 foot riverfront. Right. So this is, uh, let me just pull up this drawing of the architects. So this is the new deck here. Uh, I believe that the old deck was in this location here and there's a, I think that this is old deck. It's, it's, it's the exact identical scope, size and footprint of and the prior there's, deck. There's that are coming down off the back of the deck. Yeah, I mean, my only comment would be it would be nice to have, um, you know, a measurement of what is the uh, distance of closest encroachment to the resource. It's area. outside of the buffer zone and some in the outer river fronts. So, um, for all intents and purposes, the change in the the deck configuration is is not material to the commission. Oh. Okay. Yep. So uh, the one question that I would have is on the erosion controls. Um, Diane, I had emailed you a couple of weeks ago to oh, have yes. those entrenched properly by the contractor. Has that been done? Yes, ma'am. Once you notified me, I immediately notified the contractor. Uh -huh. They came out here and once you have verified that that was the specific location, they did immediately resolve that. We put that up earlier because I had to um, demo our internal deck and around our pool area. We put that up long before they had their piece ready to go. So oh. everything mm -hmm. should be exactly to your liking because you sent us a fabulous photo and we were able to look at exactly what you wanted to have modified. Great. Thank you. All right. If there's no other comments from the commissioners, um, I'll ask it, but I don't think there's any comment from the public uh, since there's a small crowd here uh, and seeing none. Um, I do believe we have a, a negative determination. Yeah. So I move that we issue a negative determination of applicability number two, uh, applicability number two for uh, 157 Haywood Mill Road, RDA file number 22-15 um, with uh, the following conditions. One, prior to any work, erosion and sedimentation controls should be properly installed. Two, all disturbed areas should be seeded and mulched with a light layer of straw. And three, uh, following construction, the owner should submit a statement and photo documentation that the project was completed in accordance with this determination. Thank you, Gary. Absolutely. Bill, could I have a second? Uh, second, yes. Thank you, sir. And we'll take the vote. Gary? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank right. you, and good luck with your project. Your project. Yeah. Thank you so much, and a special thank you to Karen and Delia. I really do appreciate their patience with this. Okay. You're very yeah. welcome. <laughs> we all appreciate their support. <laughs> yeah, that's a true. Sure we do. All right, uh, Delia, we've got a COC. So the COC is for the Trustees of Reservations. They conducted landscape improvements at the Old Manse. And um, they had a little bit of knotweeds that they still needed to manage. They have done that over the fall. Um, and so that is now ready for uh, issuance. All right. Bill, you want to want to? Sure. Make a motion? So I, I move that we issue a certificate of compliance for uh, 269 Monument Street, DEP file 137 Second. Thank you. And the vote, Bill. Aye. Gary? Aye. 
and I am an I as well. All right, moving to other business. Delia, old calf pasture. Yes. So, um, uh, as I put in the letter to Sandra Folk at 181 Lowell Road, which I shared with you, um, she had uh, in 2000, we're not sure when, but in 2007, we became aware of a substantial violation of um, up to 200 trees had been removed from Old Calf Pasture. Um, and so we entered into a long <laughs> and protracted process with her um, to <clears throat> enter into restoration activities. And usually, as you know, with tree removals, we would require that there would be tree replacements um, to the equivalent of what had been removed. Um, because this is rare habitat for an open uh, habitat plant, what we did was um, worked with her. We entered into a settlement agreement, and this was after a long process um, for her to pay for the town to mow it for a period of five years, and also to uh, monitor the the uh, old calf pasture for um, the Britons violated. And obviously, as part of that settlement agreement, she was ordered to not do anything um, unauthorized on the town land. And so since 2009, we have been doing um, restoration activities every year. We go out with, old, with the Native Plant Trust and um, they are doing buckthorn removal um, with which you know the town pays a substantial amount of money for. Um, and then once those restoration activities are done, uh, the town will mow. Um, and sometimes it's not the entire pasture because we, believe certain buckthorn stands in place for them to get to a size that they're more easily treatable. Um, and last year we were not able to mow the wetter parts of the meadow because it was substantially wet everywhere. So this year when we went out to review the work that the contractor had done, um, we saw that uh, Ms. Folk had cut um, pretty much the extent of where she had initially cleared, about 150 feet off her property line into Old Calf Pasture. Let me just pull up. Um, uh, I will show you. This is uh, Old Calf Pasture is here. This is 181 Lowell Road. Uh, property line is in red. And when we went out there in uh, a week or two ago, um, it was cut about double, well, not quite double, but, but yeah, significant amount of clearing, um, that is really not, um, in keeping with our management, obviously nobody should be doing activities on conservation lands that are not authorized. I sent a violation letter and she did send something back, which said she heard the message loud and clear. Um, but she thought somebody should be mowing the meadow. So she didn't quite say that's why she took it upon herself, but um, so so that is uh, that's where we're at now. Um, do you know, did, did she actually mow it herself? Did she have a contract service do it? Do you have any idea? I don't know whether she did it herself or had a contractor, I'm not sure. Hmm. That's pretty yeah. Interesting. yeah. Although the bounds are quite clear, you know. Right, by that's way what I was going to ask: Is we, as part of the settlement, did you have her put up pheno marker saying, you know, no mowing? Yeah. So, as part of the settlement agreement, um, she was required, and she did install a four by four granite bound here, six inch reveal, same here, and um, I can. Um, I thought that picture you sent was very telling too, right? In terms of the, it's all a, it's all a lawn area, so those bounds are yeah. quite visible. Yeah, so, and especially after she mowed. Now, <laughs> yeah. now it's true. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. 
Um, you can barely see it. It's this little gray thing yep. here. Well, That's the property bound. Her property essentially, you can see a tiny bit of a two foot slope here. Mm -hmm. That is her property line. Um, this is, you know, basically almost synonymous with the tree line on the abutters. Uh, property. So she has, you know, mowed at least 150 feet into the meadow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I, I I thought your letter was, at least from my purview, was appropriate and diplomatic. Yeah. If you will. Patient as well. Yes. <laughs> Restrained. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, this is did you did you speak with her or is this a letter of exchanges or how did how did that did you have a chance to talk with her no that's just yeah. been letter exchanges yeah unbelievable mm -hmm. yeah if you want she hadn't done that they hadn't done it before i mean if it's been pretty clear exactly yeah, yeah. Especially she went through a settlement agreement, like she should understand it's not her land. <laughs> well, and that was after, you know, it was identified in 2007. And, you know, there were many letters, there were many conversations with the commission, and there was no action on her part. And so it got to the point that the commission issued an enforcement order. And those are so few and far between. I think there's been half a dozen since I've been here. Yeah. Um, and you know that really is a last resort. So that did get her attention, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I was shocked. So the question I would have is: it, is is the letter enough? Is there anything we should else should be done? Hmm. I mean, I'm wondering if we should have her put up pheno markers that say you know, no mowing beyond this point or something, so that she and whoever a future owner may be recognize that it's not there. or a fence yeah yeah but those, I, I mean i'd rather not comment. have a fence if we don't need it but what, what i think about, you know markers will get lost hmm. what about any 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 damage that may have been done by the mowing is there any way of having her pay for some sort of, a, of an assessment a biological assessment of what has happened or what she's done or is that not it's not that clear um, there's not, I mean, so we did a violet survey in the spring and that was not part of the transect that we evaluated. Um, it is, it has not yet demonstrated itself to be, the violets haven't yet moved into that area. We okay. have maybe six or seven subpopulations and there's one that's close by, but, um, I, it's a good question, Bill, um, but I'm I'm not sure if if there's anything there that's. I mean, if time will if time will eventually you know restore what was there, then it just seems like you know some kind of a fine would be in order. But I don't know. I, I, maybe we don't want to get in practice of finding citizens. Just but we don't. Well, there's a, 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 a more than a footfall, but. It, it, I, I was just reading through some of the history, and it seemed like it was a, it was a, it was a real struggle on the first of, event. You know, a, what a year plus mm -hmm. to kind of get her to pay attention and enter into a settlement agreement. And even then, reading the settlement agreement, allegedly <laughs> admitting to none of it. And I know it's legalese, but nonetheless, I mean, mm. it, it's uh, again, I. I think those are all fair suggestions. I just, I, I don't know if it's, if, if we're, I don't know. Well, well I think the letter can be strengthened. I mean, well, well, it's a good letter though. Right? What about, yeah. is there any reason to, to have any um, any plantings done that she that she could pay for in that in that area? Yeah, some kind of mitigation. Yeah, it, we, it, we manage it for the, we manage it for the violets. That's really yeah. our goal there because of the rare, you know, we, that that old calf pasture is the uh, largest regional population of Britons. So that's why we spend a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to get rid of the buckthorn and doing this violet count um, is really, I mean, it's secondarily for other flora and fauna. Um, 
but it's really because of the the Britons there. And so I I don't know that I would recommend that that you would okay. put other plantings in there. Okay. Um, yeah, I asked the same question, Bill, initially too. Like, she cut down all those trees, and I'm looking at the picture. I'm like, where where are the replanted trees? And and Delia explained that well for the violence yeah. and for the for the for that effort, you really don't want to have. And uh, does I mean violets are not something you can you know add some plantings of these rare violets like does native plant trust have seeds or plantings because they're rare they're very they're, they're it's it takes a lot to collect them it takes a state yeah. permit but oh, there right. are you know one of the problems with the britain's violet is hybridization and that oh. um field does have um a more common violet with which the Britons hybridizes yeah. and so maybe that's something that um she can put some money towards removal of those hybrids or you know a study to evaluate whether you know what what the best approach is for that i mean i i, I think it's i i'm i'm shocked that yeah. um, 10 years later she's gone and done the same thing yeah yeah hmm. well Delia, do you want to do you want to think on it and maybe you know towards that you know maybe that study or something and maybe maybe add that into the letter it seems like the the, the, the commission has yeah. a thought towards something that's just more mm -hmm. than just a kind of close it out response yeah. yeah um so why don't i um give it some thought and you yeah. guys give it some thought as well and and i'll put it back on the agenda for the 16th that's that would be great okay thank you for that sure yeah thank you that was very frustrating yeah all right uh, and Delia, I see on this point, I, I know we don't have a full commission tonight, but, um, you know, uh, i.e. the Natural Resources Commission meeting schedule. Yes. I, you know, this point dealer brought up uh, uh, to me, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, suggesting that perhaps we might consider moving our meetings to every three weeks. Um, you know, we, we haven't seen a, a, a really a heavy load. It takes a lot for the meetings to be put together by staff. And of course, we, we do see that on a two week schedule, if there's some cleanup by one of the applicants, then you got to get in by Friday at 12 p.m. It's can you or can't you? And there's a little, you know, scuffle and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's the thought that maybe a, every three week we can we can certainly handle the load maybe lighten a little bit for the staff and certainly make it easier on the applicants in terms of that quick turnaround from time to time. So that's, that's kind of, and, and deal is certainly anything else you, that you have to add. No, I, mean, I, I, I think that that captures it very well. And, you know, and one of the big things is, you know, we have applicants that come on a Wednesday night, they present, and if they want to be on the next agenda, and we say Friday by noon, so that gives us enough time to evaluate. And they say, that's a day and a half away. So it gives them an extra week and a half to get uh, information in. And as I said, it does lighten the load for staff um, as well as for, for you guys as well. I We've had over the past several months just with um, scheduling complications, mostly on my end, um, we have been meeting quite frequently every three weeks and it has not been uh problematic from from the applicant standpoints that i've seen um and so maybe we try that for 2023 um see how that works um other communities are on a three-week schedule so we're on a four others are on two not many are on a two-week schedule and it is it's a, it's a it's a quick turnaround yeah it is to work that way with you know filings that come in and legal notices that have to be issued and you know everything else so and then you know obviously project reviews um, yeah thumbnails and and so on it all it all takes more than we probably all all would surmise so that was yeah, good. It makes, all makes sense it's just a question of you know will we start having agendas that are you know two or three hour meetings and right so far it doesn't seem like that's happening in yeah. as you, we have been meeting every three weeks so Let's try it and see if yeah we start getting backed up. Then maybe we yeah. schedule a special meeting once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 if if if, if folks are good, 
again, we can always inquire with Sarah and Nick, uh, but it seems like, I, I don't, you know, seems like a fairly common sense, perhaps, approach. Eric, does point. that work for the select board liaison? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> One fewer <Good>. meeting. <laughs> don't want to stress you out. But. No, I love yeah. meetings. I love meetings. I think you should go every week. <laughs> we want to do stress you. Yeah. Okay, well, Good. we'll move them up to every week then, Mary. Right. Just okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks for asking, Gary. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gary. Um, all right. So, so we'll 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 make a plan on that for 2023. Great. Okay, thank you, Delia. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got some admin approvals. Yeah. They're all tree removals. The first is Bateman at 477 Lowell Road. There's a, a failing um, silver maple, oh, sorry, failing ash that is very close to the river. It's in the 25 foot no disturb zone and in the um, uh, inner riparian zone, but it is diseased and the arborist is just going to flush cut it and um, Will has looked at it and we didn't have any issues. We thought it made sense. It's not a hazard in terms of it's going to hit anything, but it is, it's a disease tree and it's just trying to limit the spread of disease. Ah, okay. Is it subject to the emerald ash borer or it was a different disease? Hard to know. I, mean, I don't know. know. Will would know, but I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah right. I just so wonder how far it's spread. It's hitting Vermont, and I just didn't know if it was down here. It is here. There, we we do. It is. It's here. Yeah. Um. So those D-shaped holes, the you know very distinct leaf or canopy dieback. Uh, it, it is here. Mm -hmm. The bark looks very shetty on on some of the ashes. So there's some in the Spencerbrook Valley. Um. I've seen it at Nishotic. Um. And I'm sure it's other places around town as well. Mm -hmm. Shame. Uh, again, at uh, 12 River Street, i uh, sorry, 13 River Street, there are two failing ash there. Um, the homeowner has already planted four river, uh, sorry, three river birch. Um, and I think, you know, that uh, accounts or accommodates for, for those removals. Uh, again, in the 25 foot no disturb zone, um, I spoke with the arborist about access and flush cutting um, should be fairly straightforward. Uh, drain off 219 Heathsbridge, Heathsbridge Road, right on the edge of the river again, 25 foot no disturb in a riparian, dying pine. She also has done a lot of um, uh, tree and shrub plantings on her property. Um, so I didn't see the need for any replanting there. And then the Masonic Temple, it's a little, that one's a little complicated. It's in the outer riverfront. There are two trees. It's a butternut, large butternut and a maple. And it they sort of straddle three property lines. And so Masonic Temple is having Stamsky do a property survey to determine whose property it's on. And that person will be responsible for the removals. Um, but we did get um, a approval from the other two property owners uh, in case it is on their properties. We're just going to issue the approval to the Masonic Temple. Um, Will looked at that as well. It's very tight between the buildings. The butternut has got a branch lean, leaning on the Masonic Temple and the maple is overhanging uh, one of the other buildings. And it didn't seem like there was a need or probably prudence to replant in that location. Okay. Thank you, Delia, for the rundown. Yeah. Um, that makes perfect sense, Bill. Gary, you good with yes. that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So I think with that, uh, we can adjourn the meeting for the evening. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> eight o'clock. Oh, eight o'clock, Ed. Right on the button. <laughs> Are we going to do... Um, um, uh, virtual meetings in the future? What, what, what's the thought about that? So you guys tell me, I mean, so it is what, and I heard this more from Nick than, than anybody else, but the combined hybrid was, you know, when we do the hybrid meetings, we expect that the a quorum of the commission will be present. Um, but it was irritating to Nick to look you know, I mean, you have almost have to have a, a laptop in front of you to see the plans because seeing them on the screen 
when you're in the room on yeah. the TV screen, it's not big enough to really understand what's going on. Um, it seems like it's easier for everybody to see the screens when they're looking on their on their on their screens. Uh, we can do whatever the commission wants. Um, it's whatever works best for you. Um, I, I I don't have a preference. Uh, I, I actually am at work because I have such a bad connection at home. I was in a CPC meeting oh, last week and I dropped off four times. So <laughs> I don't know what that is, but. Uh, you know, obviously, so I'll do whatever you guys want to do. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm flexible. I, you know, Zoom's fine. Hybrid's fine with me. I I don't I mind don't. because when I'm in person, I bring my laptop and I have the plans right in front of me. I can look at yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And again, I, I feel the same way. I'm, I'm, I'm okay either way. So, yeah. it's, all right. So Mary, we'll, what does the select board do? Uh, we have meetings in person, but we do, and, but people can participate um, virtually, but we don't have maps. See, so I think, you know, we don't have a lot of the really detailed information that people need to get close up, but we do. So we have hybrids meetings. I mean, yeah. Bill, I, I do think it's nice. I like the in-person just because of the, the presence, you sure. know, being able to see people and participate. It's different. I agree. I like that. Yeah that part of it too it's yeah i agree i'm zooming a lot during the day and but yeah. right yeah. so if we can do the hybrid thing i mean if nick prefers to see the things on the computer he could participate virtually but if he wants to come down and join us he can do that yeah. yeah sure sure yeah okay back to back to hybrid then yeah 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 why not okay all right very good, good. november 16th see you in at 141 kai's there we go. Yeah, and then what's our December schedule? I just want to give you a heads up that I'm out the week of, I don't know if we have a meeting then, uh, December 14th? No. Yes, oh. so we are the 7th and the 21st. Okay, I should be able to make both of those. Okay, Good. and That's then it. the thoughts for January was to jump, um, we go to the three-week schedule. Uh rather than January 4th to start on the 11th. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Busy. It would be January 11th and then February 1st. Yeah. Yeah. So our next meeting deal is the 16th and then December 7th. Yeah. So okay. we'll do two, two, two weeks for the next six weeks and then go to three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds all right. great. Good. Okay. Thank Thanks, you all. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you all. Bye.